The obvious thing to do when you have a bug is to start changing things to see what's wrong. This is actually a lousy way to work. You can end up breaking more than you fix and still be no closer to finding the original bug. If you do have to change the system to debug it, do so carefully. Imagine you have a light at home that doesn't turn on. You could have a burned up bulb, a bad switch, a break in the wire, a bad plug, or an outlet with no electricity. Figure out the chain of events that need to unfold for the light bulb to light and then start testing from one end to the other. Is the power at the outlet? Or does the bulb work if you screw it into another lamp? Testing this way, you can at least work methodically. If there's no power, then you may or may not have problems elsewhere, but you know you have at least one thing you have to fix. In complex systems, it's often hard to know where the problem first arises. To address this, you'll often need to add your own error reporting. To test if you got inside a loop, put a print statement inside the loop. This is the single commonest form of debugging, but there are better and worse ways to do it. Your code is just like any software. More informative debugging messages are better. It's tempting to print got here right after any event which you're testing for, but the minute you want to run two tests, you won't know which got here is which. Give it some context. A print statement that says value of x before loop equals will be much more useful than a print statement that just says value of x equals. Every print statement should convey what has changed and where it has changed. This will generate much more valuable information than just chasing got here's through your code. Sometimes the bug is that you're looking at something different than what you're working on. If you change a file but don't save it, then the version you're testing will always have the same bug. If you save a file but don't upload it, the version on the server will always have the same bug. If you rename a file but keep testing the file with the old name, the version you test will always have the same bug. In these situations, 100% of your attempted fixes will fail. The worst part of this sort of bug isn't that it's frustrating and time-wasting. The worst part is that making this mistake can make you stupider. If you think you see a bug in one of your loops and you change it, but the change doesn't fix the bug, you can end up believing that loops don't work the way you thought they did. You won't just have wasted time testing the wrong thing, you will have unlearned something as a side effect, exactly the opposite of what should be happening during debugging. 